OK, so um, for folks, you can start asking your questions uh, over IRC or the pad. And uh, after a minute or two, we'll also open up this, this big blue button room uh, for those of you who would like to join here to ask um, these questions directly. Uh, Michael, take it away. OK, cool. Looks like we've got uh, two questions on the pad. Um, the first, how does this approach compare to using TQ.L? Emacs's built-in library for transaction queues. Yeah, that, that's actually a great question. I should have called out TQ in, in the talk because uh, I actually took a hard look at it in terms of uh, my implementation. Um, you could absolutely build this using TQ.L. I chose not to because I didn't see any compelling benefits to pay the cost of, of adding another dependency and uh, creating a buffer for each new connection. Um, in, the, in the actual implementation, uh, input is buffered into a variable uh, connected to the, the connection object um, and, and just handled there. Um, have you considered using the AIO.L library uh, written by Chris Wellens, implements async await for Emacs Lisp using promises? Implemented using Elisp's record uh, data structure, turns the nested callbacks into regular looking Elisp code without introducing new keywords. Cool. No, uh, I didn't because I was not aware of the package. Um, uh, but the fact that it was written by Chris Wellens alone is enough to, to get me to take a look. Um, so, yeah, uh, perhaps uh, that could have been another uh, implementation, but I don't know. Um, this kind of code journey finally got me to understand. I don't regret. Uh, um, any, is there anything else? I think your last sentence was a little cutting off, Michael. Um, maybe you were a little far from the mic, but. Um, Okay. Yeah. Uh, all I was going to say is, yeah, I mean, leave it to, to Chris Wellens to solve the problem in, in full generality. Um, all I noted at the end was, um, given that this little project is what finally got me to understand Emacs, lit, uh, Emacs macros, uh, or Lisp macros, um, you know, I kind of, uh, I, don't, I don't regret uh, running down this implementation. Uh, we've got another question coming in. Am I aware that EMS has a, an MP? I absolutely am. Um, and there's actually another MPD client for Emacs called uh, MPDL. Yes, yes, there is. So again, I, I probably should have talked about the, the, this in, uh, in before, but I was pressed for time. Um, I was not looking. F yeah. I was not looking for a full-fledged MPD client. Um, EMS, MPDL, uh, and MPC.L can uh, give you a full UX within Emacs, and I would absolutely recommend them if that's what you're looking for. Um, I wanted to just add a few tweaks to my workflow. Now, increase the volume um, while uh, Coding, uh, put the track name in the status in, in the mode line, things like that. Um, so I felt like those were a little heavyweight. Um, in fact, I ended up corresponding with the author of PDL, and kind of the, the analogy I, I came up with was if if you know MPDL is to MPD as GNU's is to email. I wanted to build mail utils. I just wanted a couple of very tight little utilities uh, that, that would uh, get me what I want. But yeah, actually, that's also a great call out. Uh, perhaps I should have included references to those clients. One thing I will mention is I think we've got like plenty of time for questions, um, maybe close to 25 minutes or half an hour, um, <laughs> which is very interesting. And, and I think in many cases, it's been more than the actual length of the, you know, the talks. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I think that's a side effect of sort of, I guess, going with two tracks, which is nicer. Um, I mean, there's much more breathing room between the talks this year. 
um, yeah, so I mean, you know, if there are questions, uh, as long as there are questions coming in, or if you do also want to present anything extended, um, you know, more than what you covered in your talk, you're also welcome to do that and like stay here. So, okay, cool. No, I'm happy to hang out. Uh, <laughs> this is an interesting question. Uh, have I seen the Lonesome Pine specials? Uh, during the, the talk, he saw my music library and figured I'd be interested. Uh, I have not, but, oh, interesting, Bella Fleck, cool. Uh, I will be checking out Lonesome Pine, thank you. That, that's an awesome, uh, awesome tip. thinking that's probably going to be it for the questions. Uh, do we just do we hang out for the balance of the time? Yeah, sure. I think yeah, there's actually one new question on the pad, and I might have one to ask as well, but yeah, otherwise we can. Oh, apologies. Yeah, I, I needed to scroll down. Uh, would, avoid, would using dynamic special vars add anything interesting, easier to async lib? Uh, not sure what you mean by dynamic or special variables. Can you say a little more? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, I mean, certainly in the, the examples that I included, we could use variables at a larger scope. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Uh, good question. Um, I would have to think on that one. Um, to be honest, I, I went hard down the lexical binding path a few years ago uh, when it was introduced to ELISP, uh, precisely because I found dynamic binding so much more difficult to reason about. Um, possibly.
So I guess one question I might have, I'm prefixing it with the fact that I wasn't able to fully follow your talk because I've been busy behind the scenes. <laughs> um, but um, how would you say um, that you know your project compares to some of the other, um, I guess, M MPD clients? Um, yeah, like you know, a couple of years ago, I used to use NCMP CPP myself, um, and also I tried a bunch of different ones. I never quite got into using EM, um, EMMS as one. Um, I noticed that you mentioned that you know, for for example, for some of the other ones, maybe like MPC.L, um, yours may be much more lightweight. But yeah, I was wondering how you would compare them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so those are what I would call full fledged applications. Um, you can. You're familiar with NC MP CPP. You could swap that out in your as your daily driver for any of those. Um, they show you the playlist. They let you browse. They um, uh, let you set up saved playlists, etc., etc., etc. And this does none of that. Um, this is basically a building block. Or, or these are building blocks for building up Emacs commands. Um, so, for instance, I actually have a little minor mode um, that hold this, you know, with a key cord. You can adjust the volume. You can skip to the next track. You can, you know, uh, do a few things like that. But, but that's it. Um, yeah. Okay. More, of a tool, more of a toolkit than an application, I guess, is, is the way I would, would put it. Right, right. Makes a lot of sense. Awesome. Uh, another question: Can I share the code to the macro? Uh, up a bit for folks. Um, R, um, and it's on um, Opa. Let me share a link here. Um, or I guess that maybe GitHub would be the, the better UX. I can do that right now. Uh, let's see here. There. I'll uh, put it in the pad. Don't judge me. It's my first Lisp macro. I think we got all the questions. I think this is an interesting sort of, I guess, topic or thing that's come up today, um, I think multiple times. Um, there was also partly mentioned in um, RMS's talk as part of the Q&A, where he was sort of complaining a little bit or saying that how he would like to see some of uh, org's features, I guess, be decoupled from org or org syntax um, and just be made available either as libraries or maybe as smaller minor modes that one could use then throughout anywhere else in Emacs. Um, and I think I do agree, and especially now in the context of you know MPD and using it via Emacs, I think it's very important to also have um, what libraries or toolkits, as you mentioned, to be able to um, you know build upon them however you wish. So kudos, thanks so much for working on this. Oh, it's very kind of you. Yeah, I mean there was a, a much remarked upon, perhaps even controversial talk at last year's uh, Emacs Conf by Carl Voigt, if memory serves, proposing that the the org mode markup language be sort of hoisted out and given right. a sort of specification. He wanted to call it org down, um, and I think some people, for reasons unclear to me, were highly resistant to this. But yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, there's another package. Taro, perhaps. I'm pronouncing that phonetically. In addition to Wellen's AIO, that also implements a coroutine trampoline on the Emacs event loop. Interesting. 
<laughs> Any thoughts on the async await paradigm generally, red blue functions, etc.? Oh, wow. Uh, what color are my functions? Could be the topic of another talk in and of itself. Um, um, yeah, that's sort of the problem with async, isn't it? It's uh, like a virus that infects your code base once you start. Um, and, and having spent a fair amount of time in the past year or two writing async Rust, um, I guess I've kind of made my peace with it. I was highly resistant to it at first, um, but, you know, who was that venture capitalist that diagrammed the uptake of new technology? And at first you sort of saw this exponential curve of enthusiasm, then a peak, you know, you called it the valley of despair, and then sort of a plateau of acceptance. I, I kind of feel like asynchronous programming is kind of the hot new topic and everybody's diving in, um, including in scenarios where I'm not sure I see the benefit to the additional complexity to your, your program. Um, so I did it here because uh, as I tried to demonstrate, um, response latency back to the MPD server can reach into the realm of human perception, depending on the query. And like my use case was, I'm in a buffer coding, I just want to quick adjust the volume, and I couldn't, I didn't want any pauses. Um, but, you know, in a lot of other scenarios, I just don't see the benefit to, to. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's my two cents. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a lot of um, care to be taken. Um, well, I guess in both in advanced consideration, but also while impl implementation, if one is going to add asynchronicity to uh, an existing code base and making sure that, you know, cover essentially as many as existing um, workflows and path uh, code paths as possible. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, I've certainly gotten myself into trouble writing asynchronous code um, and locked up the async runtime. And it's like, well, you know, is, 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 is the benefit worth it, right? I mean, look, if you're building, um, you know, a socket server of some sort, like a, a web service, microservice type of thing, solved the the famous 10K connection problem from the last decade. But, you know, if you're writing a, a command line tool, uh, you know, <laughs> um, CLI, uh, I'm not sure why you need to spin up uh, an async runtime for that. Right. We'll definitely be checking this path. Hmm. Uh, so Chintaro appears to be the author. The package name is called Emacs Promise. Interesting. Okay. 
Interesting. Hi. Sorry. Hello. Okay, I see you re re reacting. I just wanted to check out if my mic's working. <laughs> um, the talk, uh, thank you for your interesting talk. Like, that's a yak. I already shaved myself, like, how to do uh, async programming in Emacs. I found about uh, the TQQ and I improved on it too. And then I was thinking, okay, async programming. It wasn't my whole to um, how to do macro macros, I, but it was my whole into yes, how to do um, async programming without uh, callback hell. Yeah. And as you said in your title, like you did it, uh, did async before it was cool because um, you often hear the opinion Max doesn't do multi-threading; it's just single-threaded and therefore old and useless and I'm not, not like that maybe but um, the solution you found do you think it's a viable future for Emacs to get out of the callback hell uh, I, I think so um, but I would certainly in in, in the, the pad uh, somebody pointed out that Christopher Wellens came up with a general purpose async await library that I will definitely be taking a um, because, you know, I think he used the phrase yak shaving, and that's absolutely what I was doing here. Um, so this solution is <laughs> purpose-built to my little personal problem. Um, it sounds like uh, Wellens may have solved the problem in greater generality. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, periodically on, on you know, in, in the Emacs IRC channel or an Emacs devil, somebody will say, oh my god, I can't believe oh Emacs is single-threaded. This is hopeless. And uh, yeah, I think that, you know, here's another use case for uh, asynchronous programming. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned like the AIO from Christopher Wellens because I had a look at it too. And if I remember correctly, he uses Emacs generators. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure anymore if that's the case. Interesting. Um, Let's see. Yeah. That's another cool macro use to um, get out of callback like Emacs generators. OK. Did you see oh, it yeah. already? I'm looking at it right now for the first time. Oh gosh, look at this. This is okay. And if you want, I can spare you a lot of time because um, if you go down this road and you get uh, the same direction as me, um, you find out like, okay, that's a cool solution. You already mentioned Go. The solution Go uses with the uh, coroutines or green threads or whatever you name it. Um, and. I think, in my opinion, the best solution or the neatest solution of this problem in this plant or in general is um, futures. No, not futures. Wrong name. How is it called? No, I just forgot. Um, it's a guy's scheme and it's from Andy Wingo. <laughs> and he does it with fibers, not futures. Fibers. That's fibers. The, that's the, um, this is a really good solution for the problem of how to do async, how to do um, multi-color functions, and how to, or uh, say they have all functions the same name. And it's fundamentally based on um, concurrent ML and yeah, fibers on top. Like this is cool. I would like to see this in Emacs. <laughs> Interesting. So I found. Found his talk, Channels, Concurrency, and Core is a new concurrent ML implementation. This one, yes. Okay. I will be taking a look at this. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, maybe to, to expand on this, if you don't mind. Please. Um, the idea behind it is like um, Chris Wellens uses generators. Generators like in Python generators, like you have some function and it can yield, and then you can start it again at this point, and so on and so on. Um, it's an Emacs and it's a hack. Um, it uses a macro, a macro for the code processing, and then it's 
bits of callbacks, more or less. And it's a solution for like, how do I specify callbacks without writing actually callbacks with uh, writing um, synchronous looking one card. And the general solution, and that's the reason Andy Wingo can do it in Guile, for the problem is the limited continuations. You have a delimited continuation that is that means you have a point in your program where you can yield and it yields until a prompt, like it yields a part of your code. What that means is your code can stop and pass the rest of the computation to something else, and this something else can invoke the computation. That means you can have a scheduler. Okay. And how how do you arrange for your continuation to be restarted or awoken again? Good question. Uh, that's exactly the thing the fiber does, like the scheduler. Um, you could put it um, uh, like on a Paul interface, even in Linux, which you Paul on network connection or a file creation, something like that, on a socket. Interesting. This sounds not dissimilar from what I understand Go's coroutines to be. This R is coroutines, more or less. Right. Um, these are the things you can do when you have, like, Andy Wingo can do it in Guile because he's got his fingers into the interpreter. Yes, he does. He does. <laughs> right, he's sort of got inside knowledge. Interesting. I don't know. If it, yeah, I, I think so too. He implemented the delimited continuations, but uh, yes, uh, it was maybe my point I wanted to make. Like, there's a neat solution. Synthesize you need these delimited continuations and function wise you need um, uh, like some kind of callback actually you always need some kind of callback you just hide it well <laughs> and you right, call right. the delimited continuation right i mean if you've ever you know tried to do asynchronous programming say in c using epol Sort of wind up structuring your entire program around this event loop and kind of you have sort of have this state that you move through as various things get signaled whether data shows up on a file descriptor or a timer goes off whatever and it's it's kind of mind bending it's it's definitely you know humans seem to be most comfortable writing uh, uh, imperatively and so whether it's Rust or, or Golang or JavaScript, it all seems to be like, how can we wrap that state machine more ergonomically? Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, how much more time do we have for Q&A? I think we have about um, seven and a half, eight more minutes. Um, yeah, we don't um, we don't have to use all of them, uh, all of it. If there is, there are no questions, but you're also welcome to hang out if you want. I'm happy to wait. Cool. And also, if there are no questions, I mean, one thing we could maybe do is to, um, if you'd like to maybe give a quick demo, like work through some of the parts of, uh, you know, your package, your code, that could also work, whichever, whatever you're more comfortable with. Oh, yeah. Honestly, I wasn't prepared for a live demo, so. Uh... Oh, yeah, sure. No worries. <laughs> Sorry, don't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> I'm steer clear of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs>
Let's maybe give it another minute or two, and then if no one has any questions, maybe we can wrap it up. Sounds good. I actually think I need to check in for my next talk soon. Ah, yeah, sure. All right, any last question before we wrap up, folks? All right. I think in that case, we can uh, go ahead and wrap up. Uh, thanks so much, Michael, for the great talk. I very much look forward to checking out your work and, um, yeah, seeing what, what uh, could be done with it and using it as a building block and toolkit. All right. Well, thank you so much. I feel like I learned uh, as much uh, through the Q&A as uh, other people probably did from the talk. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, it's it's great. Um, and, yeah, we were, we were very lucky to be able to do these, these sort of live Q&As and, um, Awesome speakers like yourself just being able to join in and, uh, yeah, just teach and learn. Great. All right. See you in a bit. Awesome. Yep. See you in a little bit. Bye.